You know, I wore this jacket because we were going to a high-end Korean barbecue spot. So I was like, let me wear like so a high-end jacket. So you wanted to look like a K-drama jacket. Yeah, I wanted to look like a K-drama guy, but I'm just trying to eat, so I just, <laughs> just got to take it off, man. What's going on everybody? Welcome to an episode of Fung Bros Food. We're here with Ryan Benson. Up, and as you guys know on our channel, we are always looking for the next innovation in Asian dining. And we're really excited about this spot because they're doing it. We are here at Jung Yuk Jum, which a lot of people consider the top Korean barbecue spot in LA. And we are gonna find out if dry aged Korean barbecue is worth the price. Let's, Let's go. go. Appetizers. We have a uh, premium take on the classic seafood pancake, which is hamu pajon. Hamu, hamu pajon. Hamu pajon. This is yuk hue, which is like the Korean equivalent to beef tartare. And we've had this in Guangzhou. We, we had this in Korea. And we, in the video, we thought that this thing was rutabaker because we thought it was like a light radish or some type of root. This is raw beef tartare. I believe it is a egg yolk, the raw beef on top of some, what looks to be daikon. It's actually Korean pears. We were completely wrong. So, my bad. We were wrong. So, here, the presentation is different because the egg is in a separate little um, container. And then they, they kind of rolled it up to look like. Don't they a, normally a ball. knock something out in the middle and then put the egg in there? Yeah, normally when you get the uh, yuk kue, the pears kind of mixed in. And I've never had mango with yuk kue before or any of the fish roe. You know, some people are watching at home. What do you say to people like, don't eat that, bro? You guys are gonna get sick. See, the thing is, when you eat raw beef, the beef has to be high quality beef. Otherwise, you're gonna get sick. Let me divvy up the pancake. I love the, the, the pancake. It kind of reminds me, David, of a really thick green onion pancake, the right. Chinese style, because there's different variations. Seafood pancake. Oh, man. That is so good. You know what I noticed is some spots give you a bad version of this for free, but then if you get the paid version, it's almost always worth it. I got a little bit of mussels. I got green onions in there. Let me hit you with some scallion. Oh, scal me, bro. I mean, you have to say that's one of the best seafood pancakes you ever it had. It literally is. You know how in a brownie, you want the corner pieces of the brownie? I think with this, you get like that, the corner edges and it gets like really nice and crispy. But this pancake's like really well balanced. It's like not too salty. You get a little bit of the fishiness that comes through and then like the scallion, it adds like another dimension to the uh, pancake. All right, we got Sue here. He's gonna mix the UK. Oh, Ooh. Oh, he got the technique down. Okay, so he mashed it down. He's now sliding in the yellow egg yolk. In there. Okay, oh. Oh, man. Oh. Yo, Yo, Ryan, hey, Ryan. Yo, David, Ryan. Some people are looking at the raw beef and the raw egg being like, no! <laughs> if you're gonna try this dish, try it at a high quality Korean yes. restaurant. Like, Jung Yuk Jung. You gotta really like meat to stare at a pile of raw beef and be like, yo, that looks beautiful. This almost looks like we're supposed to be wrapping it in dumplings. Yukwe. Raw beef salad. A Korean beef takta. Cheers. Mmm. Mmm. I almost, in a weird way, can't tell I'm eating raw beef, right? Like, that is like juicy. Every time, like, I eat raw beef, I kind of forget that it is raw. I feel like you get like the real beefiness coming through, but then you get like a little burst of the masego or the fish roe mm. that kind of like cuts through a little bit. I really think the fruits add a lot. Yo, the fruit is what the French been missing. Cause I knew I didn't like beef tartare that much. Right. I had this one with more fruit and some elements of beef tartare. I like it a lot. I, so I, like, I like the Korean preparation actually better than the French too. It has that little bit of the fruit that like comes through and really kind of helps cut the beef. You would get some blood flavor, but it's not gross. No. All right, so guys, what we have here is what Jung Yuk Jung is famous for besides the dry aged beef. This is the beef tartare sushi. I've never seen anything like this before. It's funny because we were just eating the Korean beef tartare and then now we're having more of a French style, except in sushi form. Whoa, dude. Yo. That is gram worthy. So basically the same meat that they're using for the yuk kue, they're using on this beef um, tartare sushi. And on top you have sesame seeds, green onions, regular onions, and then in the rice, they 
put chestnuts. I've never had anything like this before in my life. My brain synapses are developing because yeah. this is something new. It's to cubed. My brain. It's cubed, man. Raw beef sushi. Almost gives me kind of a vibe of like tuna sushi, where it's like it's a really dark, kind of bloody meat, right. but it's really light, goes down easy. If you were blind and I told you that that was a form of tuna, would you believe me? It's like you replace the fishiness <laughs> of tuna with yeah, beef, beef though. Beef, yeah. Yeah. So I would say while it has the texture of tuna, obviously it has more of the flavor. Wait, there's of no meat. ocean. There's no ocean essence. I, I thought the chestnuts added a lot. It did. Just gave it that crunch. I think the rice really makes a difference here. Like the difference between the yukwe and the sushi, obviously, I mean, it has rice, but just like sweetness that comes with the chestnut that you didn't get before, but also it's like really nutty too. I would say for me, I prefer this over the Yukwe. Just because it feels more like a complete, complete thing. Obviously, obviously, that is one of the appeals of Nibiri. The appeal is that you're getting all the layers in one. It lived up to the hype. Before the meat gets to the restaurant, the meat has been dry-aged for 45 days. And then they also have a dry-aged locker here where they do dry-aging for sometimes up to another two weeks. So when you dry-age meat, it's kept in a stable environment at a colder temperature, like bacteria will start to grow on the, on the outside of the meat. And as it continues to age, more and more moisture will leak out of the beef. So it'll, it'll, it'll make the beef shrink in size, but the enzymes will also start to break down the long like protein chains. And so you get a much tender, much more tender and much more concentrated flavor from the dry aged beef. It's the easy way to put it just like, that's just really ripe beef. But there was a whole right. process. Obviously, fruit you can just leave it out and it gets ripe. Right. With beef, you have to be very careful and calculated right. about the techniques on it's how a, to do it's it. It really is a science on, on how to dry age the, the meat without causing any type of sickness. So this ribeye is wet aged. These tomahawk pieces are dry aged. What is wet aged? So wet aging, you won't get as much liquid loss as you do in dry aged, but you still get that little bit of age, so it'll, it'll taste different than your normal beef. This is what makes Jung Yuk Jum the premier Korean barbecue spot here. Because of this, you have wet aged ribeye, you have dry aged tomahawk, you even had raw beef, so you got all different types of yeah. beef going from uncooked to and very cooked. Anything but regular. Yeah, anything <laughs> but regular beef. Dry aged tomahawk, very nutty. Now he just comes out, there's a little bit of funk, dude. But that funk, and it almost has like that natural like oil fatty taste right. that I'm loving right now. The texture is just super soft. It almost kind of like melts in your mouth. Wet, wet aged age ribeye. Rib All right, so this is the wet aged ribeye. We just had the dry age. I feel like it was also very tender and very beefy, but not as nutty. I don't get the funkiness that I get from the tomahawk. I actually felt like the tomahawk dry aged felt beefier though. Yeah. This is way more juicier, but the other one was beefier and both broke down in my mouth really, really easily. easily. Andrew, you are a dry aged beef skeptic. I, so, I, I, I've had it before, so I, I don't know the quality. Maybe there's different qualities of dry aged beef. I've had it before, I wasn't always impressed. So here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna have you close your eyes. I'm gonna put two pieces of beef on your plate. Try both of them. Let me know which team you're on. All right, I'm closing my eyes. Ryan, I was actually hoping that you would say, okay, and then I'm gonna feed you. Oh, I, I will, no, I will feed kidding. you, no, I no, got no, you. No, no, it's all good, it's all good. <laughs> you <laughs> asked for it, you, all right, all right, all right. Yeah, yeah, I did, yeah, I did. That, that is the most controlled uh, way. Here's the first this. one. Okay, hold on, is it, is it, is it too hot? Are you gonna burn me? Here, Just I'll, I'll the blow it for you. <laughs> oh, that's kind of weird, but <laughs> why not? All right. So that's the first meat. That was really good. <laughs> it was super tender, broke down in my mouth. I think I know which piece that is. Good. Let's try this next one. It's coming in. All right, which one's the dry age? Meat number one or meat number two? I think the dry age was meat number one. Nah. Really? Whoa! The second piece is wet age. No, no. The second piece is dry age. Really? Yeah. It was way juicier for some reason. Dude, why are you judging it on the juiciness? You're supposed to go on the, the flavor. flavor. No, no, no. I know. I, 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 I like number two. So you like number two better? Yeah, and that was the, the dry age. All right, well, now everybody got to do the test. All right, we got to do it. We gotta all right, do. all right, Ryan, you close your eyes. 
the fat that comes out from the meat kind of just coats the inside of your mouth. And it's just like super, super nutty, super beefy. Okay. Next one. Three, two, one. I like number two. I think the dry age is number one. Okay. You were right. Wow. You were right. But you said you liked number two. So you you preferred the wet age just for that bite for bite. I think bite for bite, it might have been a different uh, cut of the beef. I could tell on the first one, the, the fat is what really gave it away for me. Like okay. the inside of my mouth was all coated with a lot more of that like nutty fat than the second one. Dave, are you gonna do it? All right, man. I'm his brother. <laughs> all right, coming in. <laughs> When you close your eyes and you're completely dark, it really completely changes the way you eat the food. Yeah, yeah you have like no image in your mind. Coming in. <laughs> Number two is the dry age. Oh, he got it. I'm sure, okay. just because the nuttiness, but actually for me, it's the mouth feel. The mouth feel. The muscle fiber is completely different. I would say I prefer the dry age. It breaks down easier in your mouth. Yeah. And then the wet age one kind of stick together a little bit more. Right. So there's a couple more chews, right. but it's probably overall juicier. And, and obviously the um, the dry age, it tastes less conventional. Yeah. It tastes further from what you're used to right. in terms of just buying a steak from the store and cooking it yourself right. at home. I said dry age, but I got it wrong. David said he liked dry age and he got it right. And then you said you like the wet age. I like the wet age, but I think it's the cut of the beef okay. more than anything, because the ribeye will have more fat throughout the whole entire cut than a tomahawk. You guys, today, and I wasn't fully expecting it, today was just all about beef, man. Raw beef, wet age, dry age, beef sushi. And not only that, I love the cultural aspect of Korean barbecue. Like, you come here with your friends and it's interactive. Like, yeah, I mean, normally you don't feed each other food like we just did, but there is like this fun aspect of like coming here with a group of, group of friends, being able to experience some like, high quality food. All right, everybody, thank you so much for watching that video. And actually, Jung Yuk Jung is giving away one $100 gift card to any three of their locations, one in Flushing, New York, one in Jersey, and one here in LA. All you have to do is follow all of our Instagrams down below, and then comment in this YouTube video your favorite Korean barbecue hack. I think there's a lot of different ways to eat Korean barbecue, but I know a lot of people have a lot of creative ways to eat it. Definitely let us know your most creative way on how to eat Korean barbecue in the comments down below and leave your Instagram handle so that we can contact you if you win. We'll pick a winner in the next three days. Thank you so much for watching. $100 to Jung Yuk Jung.